everyone, this is Deborah. I've been a U on YouTube for like 12 years. I've been single for about 13 years and I have been on um, a couple dating sites on and off. And here is some useful suggestions for you guys and girls, okay? These are things that I have found to be true and that is the guys have got their sunglasses on and a hat, okay? In every picture, I can see, you know, the sunglasses on for one or two pictures, but not all of them. Okay, that that is a red flag for us girls to think, okay, if number one, he's bald or and or he is um, still not divorced or he's hiding from some somebody that he doesn't want them to know that he's on the dating site. So, you guys... Quit doing that. Also, some of the guys will will be sitting far away, and you don't even see really their face. And a lot of them will have two and three other men in the picture, and you're scratching your head, going, "Well, which one is it?" You know. And a lot of guys have little babies and little girls on their site. That is not good. I don't care if you're a doting grandfather. Don't do that. Okay? That child may not like that when they grow up or the mother of that child. Okay? Um, another thing is they some of the guys love to take pictures of them in their boat. Well, honey, if, if you don't own that boat, you don't have the title in your name, don't do that. Or, uh, same thing with the Corvette or Lamborghini or Porsche. You know, they, you know, you're taking pictures leaning up against this wonderful car. If you own that car, don't do it. It gives a girl a false sense of um, what you're about. Uh, I have a funny story. The first time my little sister went on a date, the, the guy brought a suitcase and wanted to move in on the first date. She could not believe what she was seeing. I know I've, I've been on a couple dates where I found out the guy didn't even have a home and he was living with his son. Yeah, or, or they're living in a basement somewhere. Now, living in a basement is not bad, but if the guy's like in their 50s or 60s and he's still living in a basement under somebody else's house, that is a big red flag, people. Uh, also, if you don't live anywhere near the girl, don't. Contact her. It's, you're wasting your you're wasting your breath. You're wasting your time. Um, a lot of guys will not read my profile, and I know it right off because I have the secret word. If they don't put the secret word in the first time they 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 text me, um, then I know that they're just looking at pictures. They're not looking at at, at, at who you are as a person and what you want in the relationship. So many times I'll say, well, it would have been nice if you had read my profile. They go, well, yeah, I read it. I said, no, you didn't. Now you're a liar on top of everything else. Okay. Uh, now, then I put in my profile, I don't like on this totally it, it, uh, annoying amounts of texts. Some of the guys are asking very detailed, intimate questions that should not even be asked until you've known the person for at least six months. Uh, don't do that either. Uh, and, and girls and guys, don't give out your last name until you know you feel safe with this person. Um, I know I went out on a date a couple years ago with this guy who uh, I have since believe has a big medical condition. He has profuse sweating problems. I thought he was going to die on me the first two two times uh, I went on a date with him. He, he, he swore he did not have a medical issue, but I know that he did. He would be, he was like Big Ed on the 90 day finance. He was just dripping and it stunk. Oh my God. I mean, I can still smell that to this day. And he was like just gross. And let me tell you what, if you're on a date with a girl that is scaring you or a guy that is scaring you or something is not right, honey, leave them. 
just leave, jump in your car and go. Hopefully you did not get in the car with them uh, because there is some very evil people out there. If you have, if, if, if you can tell somebody has lied to you about who they are or what they are, just leave. You don't owe that person anything at all. Don't feel bad about it because you haven't done anything wrong. I had to do this on two of my dates. Thank God I had my own wheels. Um, and if a guy is asking or behaving inappropriately on the first couple of dates, if he's embarrassing you, if he's making you blush, or if the girl is just acting just crazy as a June bug, you need to get out of there now while you can. Uh, yeah. So, a uh, uh, lot of other guys will ask you certain things to see if they can manipulate you. Yeah. They'll, they'll, and they word it so that any little thing you tell them, and Dr. Phil wrote a book about this. I think it's his latest book. If they are asking you things that doesn't sit right with you, it's because they're going to use that against you in the future. So be very careful of anything that you let out early in a relationship. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm very scared. I'm, I'm I'm scared going out on dates, but I am very cautious and. I always bring my own money. I always bring my own car. You never know what could happen. Uh, a lot of people will ask, well, why Why are you on a dating site? Oh, you're just so pretty. Well, uh, that's a stupid thing to ask a girl. That's a stupid thing to ask a guy, too. Life throws so much shit at you that you do not have control over. That is one of the most stupid... What, what are you doing on here? Why haven't you married? Well, honey, you don't have to be married to be happy. You don't. I have never been this happy since I was 16. And uh, that is by the grace of God. Oh, my Lord. Yes. Uh, a lot of you were, were in a relationship for whatever reason that you couldn't get out of or that you were scared or intimidated or threatened. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand why, why some people stay in a relationship when they know that they are, they are being abused or being harmed. It's, it's the trauma bonding people. It is a very real thing. And then you have the reactive abuse. So let me explain to you what that is. I'll try to do it as best as I can. There's a lot better people who do a better job at, at defining what reactive abuse is. And that is when you've had it with your abuser, you, you've, you've kept your calm, you've walked around on eggshells for so long, and all of a sudden, that abuser knows what your, red, what your hot buttons are. And that they will... Uh, they're the ones that will record this or have a witness there because they're going to do something that's going to make you really mad and you can't take it anymore. And then you look like the crazy one. And then they've got it on video or they've got a witness. Oh, she's the crazy one. If you have a spouse or a, a significant other that's going around telling everybody you're crazy, uh, there is a M.O. there. They have a hidden agenda that you have, that you're still in that denial and you don't know what's going on. If you are going to bed at night and waking up in the morning a miserable, sad, depressed human being, you, you're wasting such beautiful time in your life because this world is a really cool world. Now, I didn't say cruel. I said cool. This is a beautiful world that there's so many 
uh, opportunities, so many wonderful things that you could be doing instead of sitting around feeling sorry for yourself uh, and blaming yourself. A lot of people blame themselves for things that they, now that's what I call gaslighting. When somebody is making you question everything you do, uh, that's gaslighting. They're making you question your own sanity of who you are. If you are nothing like, if you don't recognize the person you have become, honey, I guarantee you, 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 someone is gaslighting you. Someone is gaslighting you. Um, it's when you, you think one way and another person's trying to make you think another way or uh, they're questioning your very sanity. Yeah, gaslighting, I think, is the most dangerous thing that anybody can do. And, oh, my God, love bombing. Let me tell you about love bombing. I had this one guy that said he wanted to marry me on the first date. On uh, Two weeks later, I, I was on an overnight ski trip with him. Uh, and out of nowhere, because we weren't intimate or anything, that's what you're thinking. No, out of nowhere, he goes, oh, I just buried my wife two weeks ago. I go, what? Honey, that's a love bombing. That is love bombing. bombing. Now, listen, he lived, in a, he lived in a mansion. He had a brand new car. He worked at the hospital. Uh, and then when he took me on the ski trip to Wintergreen, he brought his penny jar. I swear to God, he brought his penny jar and he was counting his pennies in one of the nicest restaurants on the mountain. I'm going, holy crap. So don't let somebody's assets fool you because he could be broke as a convict. You know, say better to date somebody who lives in a trailer and has their bills paid. So they don't bring your penny jar on a ski trip. Also, he never let me, like, see him really close up with his hair. And he only had one strand of hair that he just wrapped around his head like a turban. And I was mortified going down the mountain skiing. And this one hair was, like, flopping in the wind. Oh, my God. And then this was... Um, I noticed he was stealing Wi-Fi from a neighbor on this mountain. Okay, what kind? Well, he was letting me know who he is, honey. If somebody is telling you what he wants or what he is, believe them. Because he, I would never, ever do that, ever. Steal Wi-Fi from a neighbor or electricity, you know? So, uh, yeah. This is some heavy shit, people. And then when I questioned him about him burying his wife just two weeks early, oh, well, she'd been sick a really long time. I mean, please, people, if you're going if you're going to bury somebody and go out dating two weeks later, at least wait three weeks, okay? Three weeks. All right. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, the few times I let a couple guys come over to my house, for some reason, they want to hug you. They want to hug you real tight. It's, it's a, so, so they can feel your boobs, people. Well, some of them hug me so tight, I, 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 I couldn't catch my breath, you know? Uh, I would... Well, thank God that wasn't the COVID going on back then, or the pandemic, but... Yeah, and dating is a numbers game, people. Don't let anybody get mad at you or question why you've been on so many dates because it is a numbers game you may have to date a hundred people before you find one guy who is sincere and genuine and who has no hidden agenda um, and who is for real and I really think the secret to a good life is to be loved and to love someone I, once I fall in love, I love too hard. And that's what I'm scared of. And I'm, I'm scared of falling in love with somebody and then I love them too much and then something happens beyond my control.
because, you know, love is a hurting thing. It really is. So, I will say goodbye. <laughs>